in Taylor by the hands of man 6,000 years ago. We're at a book festival, but art, modern art, ancient art comes together and it's first expressed in the west of Ireland at the Bohe Stone or St. Patrick's Chair. And when you stand on it, you're looking at a rock art complex from which, if you're here in April, 18th of April, and again in August, and you stand on that rock, to the west, this beautiful summit cone of Corpatrick is clearly visible as a quartzite cone. And the sun, as it goes down, rises along and appears to stop right on the summit of this magnificent peak. And then, for the next half an hour, as the sun sets, it appears to glide down perfectly in line with the north slope of Corpatrick. It's an incredible sight. That stone was first documented by George Kinnan, famous 19th century geologist who draped the west of Ireland left, right and centre, and he left a wonderful set of scholarship behind him. But of course a lot of people don't bother reading 19th century accounts anymore. And of course the Catholic and Protestant clergy of Ireland could write the most wonderful articles and then they stopped writing at independence. And then a wonderful man from this town, Jerry Bracken, a photographer, a scholar who ran a hostel out the road, a brilliant photographer. And I flew, and very good at flying as well, if a bit. I used to fly the plane, why are you taking photographs? And I'm back again. And Jerry and Wayman, a chief physicist from Dun Circle Observatory, they came down to have a look at the St. Patrick's chair. And they published this extraordinary article about the site. And they reckoned that from this, the reason the stone is decorated here is because you can observe this amazing event. Now what's wonderful about it, unlike Newgrange, where you have to queue for a thousand years to get into it, <laughs> there's a vast space available all around the Bowie Stone and that rolling sun phenomenon. If you're lucky to be here on those days, you can line the hills either side of the Bowie Stone and see this extraordinary event. And that links, and of course cutting into the edge of the stone, is a number of crosses carved onto it. Some of them are Christian because this was a st stopping off point. There's a children's burial ground right next to it. There's a monastery incorporated, are they incorporated into it? So when Ireland became Christian in the fifth century, well, a sort of work in progress, you might add. <laughs> Not fully finished either. <laughs> um, elements of the ancient past was in were encountered. And of course, the first man to write about this area was a man called Chirakar biographer of Patrick, and he describes that Patrick mentioned the fact that at altars, the ancient Irish used to leave offerings on these altars. So the Bohe Stone, this beautiful rock art complex, may have been one of these ancient altars in Patrick's time. And that's why the early Christians uh, absorbed it into their cult. Now most religions like to squash things as opposed to absorbing things. Crow Patrick, as you view it from the Bohe Stone, is this gorgeous summit cone, and I happen to work on it for 10 weeks, climbing up and down every day. I haven't smoked since. <laughs> Guaranteed cure, and he's struggling with all sorts of ailments. <laughs> and the lovely thing about the pilgrimage tradition here, the Catholic, the portly Catholic gentleman of Galway Mayo, it's recounted, you spend their time in the various hostelries at the base of the mountain. <laughs> and pay mountain guides to climb the pilgrimage for them. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a lucrative, well-eyed pilgrimage tradition here. And when Aseneth Nicholson comes to Westport, she's this amazing, the finest woman writer on the Irish landscape of the 19th century. Evangelical missionary as she comes here. And when she comes to the butt of the rink, she's negotiating with the girl guides of Morrisk to climb for Patrick. <laughs> And they're charging too much. And if we know anything from charging too much, look, it caused a bloody recession. But in the 19th century, she climbs the mountain without her girl guides and leaves this incredible account. So, Cropatrick and the Rolling Sun, it's a really interesting phenomenon uh, that there's this ritual canvas right around us here, stretching all the way east to Ballantubber and arguably all the way into the wilds of Roscommon. And it goes all the way out to Cahar Island, which is Cahar the Nave. And if you're on Cahar Island, on this magical Feast of the Assumption on the 15th of August, on a sunny day, you're looking out of Bohar the Nave, the sub-sea road, a via sanctorum, that links Cahar Island with the sacred 
mountain landscape. And that road is there, but it's in the eye of those who have faith. So if you're a boring old geologist out there, you may not see it. But in the Shalachas, in the traditional lore of the West of Ireland, Crowpatrick, Crowe Forex stood alone and proud as a symbol of our ancient spiritual tradition. It goes back to the 5th century. It may go back all the way to 6,000 years. So the Rolling Sun, borrowed from the work of Jerry Bracken, borrowed from the first recognition of, of by, by Wakeman or by Kenahan in the 19th century, and of course Christianized at some point in the 4th or 5th century. That's what this festival is named after. One of the extraordinary artistic sites in the whole of Ireland. In terms of rock art, there's only two sites better than it. One in Donegal at Miva, and one in Ayrshire. So this is an extraordinary site. It's now luckily in the hands of Mayo County Council, who way above any other county council, employ archaeologists. They've invested in arts, they've invested in archaeology. The budgets were being slashed left, right and centre. They're light years ahead of every other county, including my own county, Galway. And uh, there is plans afoot to conserve and do other work around this amazing rock art complex. So the Rolling Sun is based on St. Patrick's Chair, and it's a living link with a spiritual tradition stretching all the way back to the Neolithic. Gurumil Wadi, Shemesh.